Let's start off by looking at non-renewable energy. Non-renewable or finite resources are resources that will run out. Coal, oil, gas and nuclear are all finite resources. And of these, coal, oil and gas are examples of fossil fuels. Coal is made from the fossilised remains of dead plants and oil and gas are made from the fossilised remains of sea creatures and it takes millions of years to make these fossil fuels. So once we use them all and they run out, we will not be able to replace them. That's why we call them non-renewable. We can use these non-renewable fuels in a power station. In a power station, fuels are burned to generate electricity. When generating electricity, you need something to turn a turbine, which then turns a generator to produce electricity. And that is then transmitted across the national grid into your homes. Now we'll look at a little bit more detail about how a power station works. Fossil fuel power stations burn a fuel, for example coal, oil or gas. The fuel is used to heat water, turning it into steam. And the steam turns a turbine. So for a fossil fuel power station, it is steam which is turning the turbine, which then turns the generator. So if we see what's happening in the diagram, you've got coal as the fuel going into the power station. That coal is being burned and it's heating up water. That water is turning into steam and travelling along to the turbine and that steam will turn the turbine. The turbine is connected to the generator and that will generate electricity. That will then be transmitted across the national grid to millions of homes. So this is what it would look like if it was a fossil fuel power station if we use the finite resource that was nuclear, it would be very similar. However, all of the nuclear material would be contained and you wouldn't need to heat it up. It would be the nuclear reactions happening inside that provide the heat to heat the water, which turns it into steam, which turns the turbine, which turns the generator. There are several disadvantages with generating electricity using fossil fuel power stations. Fossil fuels are non-renewable, so that means, as we discussed earlier, that they will run out. Power stations release carbon dioxide that causes global warming. Power stations release solid particulates that cause global dimming. And power stations can also release sulphur dioxide and nitrogen oxide that cause acid rain and respiratory problems. So the challenge for different countries now is to be able to still generate the same amount of electricity but by using other resources that will not release carbon dioxide, solid particulates, sulphur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. So one way that they're looking at doing this is to use renewable energy. Renewable energy resources are resources that will not run out. Generating electricity using renewable resources is an alternative to using fossil fuels. Wind, solar, wave, biofuel, tidal, hydroelectric and geothermal are all examples of renewable energy resources and we'll look into more detail at each of those now. Firstly, we'll look at biofuel. If you break down the word biofuel, you'll see the word bio, which relates to living things, and the word fuel. And in biofuels, we're using plants as our living thing, which we will then burn as a fuel. So to make a biofuel, you would grow plants, harvest them, and then burn them in power stations. When you burn the plants in power stations, they will release CO2. However, we don't see this as a problem, because whilst they are growing, the plants are taking in CO2 from the atmosphere in a process called photosynthesis. So when you burn the plants, you are just simply releasing that CO2 back again. So they are only releasing the carbon dioxide, or the CO2, that they have taken in in the first place. They are not putting any extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
and we call this carbon neutral. So we can say that biofuels are carbon neutral, which is much better than burning something like coal, which has carbon locked up in it, and when we burn that, it's releasing extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The next renewable energy source that we'll look at is geothermal energy. If you look at the word geothermal, it's got geo, which relates to the earth, and thermal, which relates to heat. With geothermal energy, you pump water underground. Water is heated by hot rocks deep underground, and the water turns into steam, which is used to drive the turbine. So you can only do this in places in the world where you can access hot rocks underground. And just like the fossil fuel power stations, we are using steam to drive the turbine to turn the generator and generate electricity. But we are not burning any fuel, so we're not releasing any carbon dioxide into the atmosphere whilst we are doing it. One renewable energy source which you may have seen near you is wind energy. In this renewable energy, it is the wind that directly drives a turbine. So the wind coming in will drive this turbine, which will then turn the generator and generate the electricity. However, it's not very reliable because it is not always windy. Now let's look at hydroelectric energy. If we break down the word hydroelectric, we have the word hydro, which relates to water, and electric for electricity. So this is generating electricity using water. In this image, you will see a large reservoir of water. This water is stored high up, and the water is allowed to flow down to turn a turbine at the bottom. Then the water will either be allowed to flow into a river or it could be stored in a lower reservoir at the bottom and in some cases it's pumped back up again to the top if it is needed later. So it's the movement of this falling water from the top reservoir downwards which allows to turn the turbine to produce electricity. So the water is stored in the high reservoir and the water falls through the turbines to a reservoir underneath. Another way that you can generate electricity using water is through wave energy. The movement of the waves pushes water through a turbine. So with wave energy you might see some sea raisers on top of the sea and as the waves are moving up and down they will push water through a system of pipes and through a turbine and the water will again turn a turbine which turns a generator to generate electricity. There are various different designs for wave energy, but this is just one of them that you might see. Like wind energy, wave energy is not very reliable because it relies on there being lots of waves. If it is a still sea, you won't be generating any electricity. However, another renewable source that involves using seawater is tidal energy. In tidal energy, water flows through turbines as the tide goes in and out. So here are the turbines under the water and that will be connected to a generator to generate electricity and as the water flows in it will turn the turbine to generate electricity as the tide is coming in and then again as the tide goes out again it will turn the turbines to turn the generator and generate electricity. So in this system, again, it is the water that drives the turbine. And this is very reliable, as tides are guaranteed. The final renewable energy source that we'll look at is solar energy. Solar panels are made of photovoltaic cells. The solar panels absorb energy from the sun and generate electricity. So this is the one renewable energy source that doesn't involve a turbine when generating electricity. Instead, these solar panels will absorb sunlight and then generate electricity. They'll always be directed where they will get most sun throughout the day. But again, it's not very reliable because if it's cloudy, you won't produce much electricity. And during night time, you won't be producing electricity 
either. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video, then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at GCSCRevisionMonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at ScienceSurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.